Hare Krishna. So Krishna is describing the demoniac qualities, the demoniac activities of demonic people. And now we are going to see how Krishna reciprocates with these demonic personalities. So Krishna is explaining this in Shloka number 19. So let's see that now. Tan aham dvishataha kruran samsareshu naradhaman kshipamya ajrasam ashubhan asuri shveva yonishu So here Krishna is saying Tan dvishataha kruran those envious and mischievous. So what is Krishna doing with them? Samsareshu Naradhaman. They are not just envious and mischievous. They are lowest of the entire mankind. To such people, how Krishna reciprocates? Here he is saying, Ahamukshipami. I perpetually cast them. In what? Ajrasam Ashubhan Asureshu Eva Yonishu. They are cast again and again in this Bhavasagara, the ocean of material existence, into what sort of species? Into various demonic species of life. So all the ones who have demonic tendencies, demonic qualities, demonic thought process, to such people Krishna is saying that he will cast them in the ocean of this material existence and specially he will give the demonic species. Now again we have to understand here, that Krishna is very merciful. Very mercifully, he is casting these demons in the demonic species. Let's try to understand this. A very, very important point. In this verse, it is clearly indicated that the placing of a particular individual soul in, in a particular body is the prerogative of the supreme will. Now here, why is Krishna doing this? What is the need? We say Krishna is all merciful. If he is all merciful, then why is he casting the demonic people into the demonic species, lifetime after lifetime? Why is it so? So Krishna has Paramatma in the heart. He sanctions our desires. So if you remember, we had discussed the triangle. We as Jivatmas, we desire. Paramatma will sanction and Prakriti will manifest. Now, it's a very important point to note that if a person wants to be envious, he is desiring to be envious, desiring to be demoniac. So, Krishna, very mercifully, he will sanction that particular desire based on his karma. Now, when it is sanctioned, Prakriti will manifest. So, here is the Lord who is deciding based on the karma and the desire of the person. So, this is what is the point that is very important to note. It is not that the Lord has some negative feelings towards the other person who is demoniac. No. Lord treats everyone equally. How? By fulfilling whatever desires they have. So here a person has a desire to become a demon. Okay, Krishna is like, no problem. I'll put you in the demonic species of life, lifetime after lifetime. Then you be demonic, continue. Continue, continue to be envious of me, continue to be envious of my devotees. So in this way, with a merciful mood, Krishna is sanctioning their desires. Now here it is said, the demonic person may not agree to accept the supremacy of the Lord and it is a fact that he may not act, it is a fact that he may act according to his own whims, but his next birth will depend upon the decision of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and not on himself. So a demonic person might think, oh I am independent, I am all powerful, I can do everything by myself. No, next life is based on the person's karma and the Supreme Lord's sanction. So where is he independent? He cannot decide anything, nothing. So this is what is very clear. So next life will be based on his karma and the sanctioning given by the Supreme Lord. In Srimad Bhagavatam 3rd Canto, it is stated that an individual soul after his death is put into womb of a mother where he gets a particular type of body under supervision of superior power. Therefore, in the material existence, we find so many species of life, animals, insects, men and so on. All are arranged by the superior power. They are not accidental. In Bhagavad Gita, we have this philosophy of karma that is given. 
Now, a person might not believe anything from Bhagavad Gita. Say, say the person is very atheistic. But still, he'll be forced to believe in the philosophy of karma. Because in this entire world, there's so much of variety, you know, that is there. So much of variety. So many insects and reptiles and birds and beasts and the trees and human beings. Even in human beings, there are different types of human beings. Their births are different. Their skills are different. Their talents are different. Their looks is different. So how is it that so much of variety is just manifesting like that? Is it accidental? Only an insane man without any brain substance will say it's accidental. Any sane person will know there should be some background to this. And what is that background? That background is the karma of the person. And who is sanctioning that? The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is sanctioning. Because without Krishna's sanction, nothing in this world can move. So Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita, Maya dhakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam hetu nanena kaunteya jagad viparivartate. So it's very clear. Maya dhakshena, under my supervision, prakriti is working. So this is the point you know, that is made here. That there are so many different, different species and all of them are manifesting under the supervision of the Lord. And such bodies are given based on the karma of the person. The past life, whatever karma he has done, Next life, accordingly, the Supreme Lord will award the body through the agency of the material nature. As for the demonic, it is clearly said here that they are perpetually put into the wombs of demons and thus they continue to be envious, the lowest of mankind. Such demonic species of men are always held to be full of lust, always violent and hateful and always unclean. The many kinds of hunters in the jungle are considered to belong to the demonic species of life. Now see, this point we have to understand here that the person is desiring to hate the Lord. The person is desiring to have a lot of lust. So when he has a lot of desires you know, like this, Krishna is sanctioning that by putting them in that particular species, in that particular demonic species. And when he's put in that particular demonic species, okay, then he'll keep doing it. An example here is given of a hunter. So we see a hunter, you know, he will not think twice. His heart is like stone, like a steel. It will not melt even when you know, he is killing you know, different, different innocent animals in the forest. So they are basically into the demonic category. That's what is told here in this particular purport. So in this way, this is the other side of Krishna's merciful nature where he allows the desire of the demonic people to be fulfilled by giving them birth lifetime after lifetime in the demonic species. Now Krishna is going to continue, continue speaking about his reciprocation with such people even in the next verse. Let's see that in the next video. Hare Krishna.